Hey you guys, this is Guy Stevens. I've been getting a lot of questions about stuff like attendance tracking and stuff like that. And I actually have on my YouTube channel an attendance exercise, but it's a bit of a simple one. And it doesn't automatically add a bunch of students that are following a class to your attendance list. So I was thinking maybe I'll do a little exercise where I do show that technique. This is FileMaker 14. It looks a little bit different. Let's start by making a new solution. Um, I've got this attendance folder right here, so let's call this one attendance. So this is going to be a new, completely new um, <clears throat> file right now. I get my field picker, which I don't need yet, so I'm going to close that for a moment. And let's have a look, shall we? Let's start by making some tables. Let's go to File Manage Database because that's where all of the stuff is going to happen. And there we've got tables, fields and relationships. I'm going to start by making a table. And I already have an attendance table because FileMaker made that for me because that's what my file name is. But I don't really need that one. So I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to also remove occurrences of these tables in graph. The graph is this one right here. So that I can start with a clean slate. And of course, if I'm going to have students that are following classes, I'm going to need students as a table. And they will be following classes, so I will need classes as well. So those are my two first tables that I'm going to start with. Okay, let's look into our students table. And if we double click it, we go to the fields area where we've got our table students where we can add fields. And the first field is always going to be an ID field. An ID field is going to be uh, the field that uniquely, uniquely identifies each student. This is going to have to be a um, number field. This is a text field now, so I'm going to go and choose number. And on a Mac, this is a command N if you want the shortcut. And then I'm going to create this one. And because I want every uh, student to have a unique number, I'm going to double click this and go into the settings of this field. And I'm going to say, give me an auto enter serial number. All right, so that's cool. That's going to give every student its own number. So that's great. Then I'm going to need a name. But I, uh, I will always like to keep the first and last name separate because then you can use those names separately. Like in a letter, you want to go uh, do something like Dear Mr. or Mrs. N and the last name, then you will need that name in a separate field. So I'm going to say first name. And that's going to be a text. So I'm going to hit Command T. That's text. Great. And then I've got last name, which is also a text. And if you want to combine those back into a full name, you can make a calculation field. And I always like to call my calculation fields C underscore. And then I'm going to call this one full name. And that's going to be a calculation. And a calculation is command L. A calculation, uh, calculation field, you get this uh, specified calculation dialog, which allows you to create a calculation. Now, this looks a little complicated. In FileMaker 14, it looks a little bit different than it did before, but it's not really that difficult. What we want to do is we want to get the first name, and then we would also like to add the last name. Now, if you just put them uh, behind each other like that, that's not going to work. We need some sort of a... Um, how do you call that an operator to join the two of them together and the operator that we're going to need is the and operator right here um, so if we put that one in between then we will have the first name and the last name but that is just going to stick the two of them together now I've got a field name here and a field name there and those can just be entered by their name if I would like to add a text then I need to put that text between quotation marks kind of like these quotation marks um, but what I want to do is I want to add a space in the middle here that would be something like this uh, a space between two quotation marks but it, this is again another element so I've got a field name I've got a, a text here and I've got another field name and those three elements all need to have an operator in between them so I'm going to add another operator right here the oops not two I want one so I've got first name and I've got a space in between quotation marks and I've got a last name and that's going to beautifully create for me my um, my full name now the calculation result here it says a number now this is going to give me a full name a full name is not a number a full name is a text and that's very important to change that because if you leave that at number then um, eventually you're gonna have problems if you make stuff like drop downs and stuff like that 
Okay, this looks kind of good. Let's hit OK. So I've got my student's first and last name and the full name. And now I can add a bunch of fields if I want to, the address, telephone number, and all of that. But in this exercise, I'm not going to need that. So this is good. Then I'm going to go to my classes. And again, I will always start with an ID field, which is a number field. I used my shortcut uh, command N to make a number. I'm going to hit return. And as always, uh, and this will be an auto enter serial number. OK. Great, and then I've got my class name. Uh, that's going to be a text, so Command T. Then what else do I need? I could have a description if I want, which is also going to be a text. And that's pretty much it. Okay, great. So I've got uh, my attendance layout now. I've got my students and my classes. Now, if you remember, this attendance layout was made automatically because I named my file attendance, but I don't really want that one. So let's go to File, Manage Layouts, and let's get rid of this attendance layout. I don't really need it. So let's hit Delete and Delete, and then that one is gone. Great. So now I've got my first layout, my student's layout, and I am in layout mode as you can see down here I've got layout mode I've got preview mode I've got find mode and I've got browse mode browse mode is the one you use to enter data find mode is if you want to find stuff layout is when you want to change your layout and preview is how it's gonna look like when you're gonna print it okay so I'm gonna go into browse mode for a second and have a little look now I've got my uh, data entry layout that I can use to enter data and um, I've basically got zero records so if I want to add a student I need to click new record and then this one gets the number one automatically and I'm gonna say this one is John last name is Doe and you can see as I'm typing ahead this one is already being filled in then the last name hasn't shown up yet and that's because I'm still editing this last name field as soon as I'm going to uh, exit this field either by hitting tab or hitting return or clicking outside here like this then you will see that the last name does appear and my calculation does do its job of creating a full name that's great I can add a new record and as you can see the new one now gets the number two and this number will just simply keep going up so I've got a Jane whoops that's not right something like this Jane Doe right great so I've got two students pretty cool now I can go to my classes and this is basically the same thing I can make a new record and I could say the class name is English and this is where, where we learn English that's not hard and I can make another one math calculations and stuff all right great so now we have our classes and we have our students um, we are looking at those in um, form view right here but you also have a list view which is not that interesting for this and we also have a table view which is kind of interesting what I always like to do is I like to take my original tables that are my original layouts that I have created and I like to put those in table view that way I can see all of my data and then when I want to make a data entry layout I always just make a new one so I'm gonna put this classes in um, in table view and I'm gonna take the students as well and put it in table view as well alright so I've got all my students right now and I've got all my classes now how can I assign students to a certain class I could add a field here that says wait I'm in the classes table right now so I could add a field student and then I could write a student's name or a student's ID in there that is a possibility but then I could only basically put one student in there or I would have to make a bunch of different fields student one two three four etc and that's not clever at all it's a really bad system uh, so from the classes side this is not really gonna work so let's look at the student side I could say John Doe is in the math class I could make a new field class and then I could say he's in the math class I could even put the math class ID in here but again I could only assign one class to John Doe and not multiple classes if he's taken like two or three classes then I've got a problem again I could also make class 1 class 2 class 3 fields here but that's just a really bad way of doing it I'm gonna need to do something else and what I need is a join table basically let's have a look 
at, I don't know if this is going to help me explain it or not. Let's go to File Manage Database Relationships. I've got students and I've got classes and I need some way to say that certain students are in certain classes. With these two uh, tables I'm kind of stuck so I'm going to need a new one and that's called a join table. So I'm going to make a new table and you will see um, exactly how that works in a second. Let's do join students classes and then we can I always like to leave out spaces so I use underscores let's create this one let's have a look and as always uh, every uh, table gets its own ID which is a number which is as always set to auto enter a serial number great and then I will need to have um, two fields I need to link a student with a class and I have they all have ID so I'm gonna say student ID and we're gonna call this one FK which is short for foreign key. That means the student ID is going to be in this table, but it's going to come from another table. Um, you can also just call this student ID. It doesn't really matter. It's a simple number field, and I also have classes ID FK. And that's also a simple number field. All right, that is great. Let's have a look. Um, first of all, let's have a look at this table. So it's right here, and I'm going to set this one in table view as well. I can make a new record now, this automatically gets the number one. This is not the, the number I need, but now what I can do is I can say that student one is in class number one, but I can also make a new record saying that student one is also in class number two. And that way I can um, assign one single student to multiple different classes. That's kind of cool. Um, I can also have, let's make a new record where I've got student 2 who also goes to class 1. So now I've got uh, in this class, class number 1, now it has two students in there. And this student is going to two different classes. So with this join table, I can basically assign an unlimited amount of students to an unlimited limited amount of classes. And this works pretty well. Now, this layout that I have right here is not really a handy way to fill this stuff in because you don't know the IDs and in fact you don't really want to have anything to do with the IDs. So let's, um, let's have a look at how we can do this a little bit better um, in a more like visual manner. So let's go to um, form view just for a second and then let's go into edit layout here and that we need to do that so we can make a new layout. We're going to make a new layout based on, let's say, based on the students. We can actually choose students or classes. Um, I'll just go with students and I'm going to call, and then name this layout Lay Students. Great. This is going to be a layout for my computer. This can be in form view. I could also put this in table view, but in this case, this is going to be a data entry layout. So I would like it to look nice and pretty so my user can um, input uh, data in that one. Okay, let's hit finish. There I've got my new lay students, but it's completely empty. I can add fields to this using my um, field drag tool, my field tool right here, or I can use my field picker, which is really fancy, and then I can just um, select multiple fields at once, and uh, I can drag and add them to my um, layout. Okay, I'm gonna select both of these. I want first name, I want last name. I, I'm not going to add this full name right now. I'm going to add this in a second in a different way. Let's look at our drag options right here. I can choose my field placement. So I want to have my fields uh, on top of each other. And then I um, would like to choose how my labels need to be. So I can choose no labels, labels above the fields. I can choose my uh, to place my uh, labels on the left of the field, which is kind of the normal one. And this is new in FileMaker 14. Place the labels within the fields, um, and that is called a placeholder text when dragged to the layout. And that's new and fun, and I haven't tried that yet, so let's give that one a try. Let's take these two fields and let's drag them on our layout. Let's place them somewhere here, and that looks kind of cool. I've got my first name and my last name add it to my layout that's kind of awesome I don't need my field picker anymore and there's this one kind of trick that I usually like to do I'm going to add the full name on top of the layout in the header right here and I'm not going to add that as a field because we've already done that we already know how that works let's use our text tool let's drag a little square here and when we render let's go into insert 
merge field. That's kind of cool. That's something that you could also use like in a letter or to put an address on somewhere. Merge field is very simple. You can just choose a field and it shows up as like a text field. I can make that a little bigger by clicking these two A's right here. Then I get my formatting bar and then I can choose kind of a big uh, font size. Whoops. I'm going to choose it again like so, so that my text becomes nice and big and clear and that way the name of the student shows up up top. All right, this looks kind of good. Let's exit our layout and let's look. Jane Doe, Jane Doe, this is looking kind of cool. And if I look here, then I've got my students here kind of in a table view, but I also have my layout of students in a nice data entry layout. And if I browse through them, I can see John Doe and I can see Jane Doe. So I've got my students in there and this is looking kind of good. Okay, what's next? I can make the same layout for my classes. But you guys already know how to do that right now. That's basically, I'll just do it really quickly. Edit layout, new layout, lay classes. I'm going to choose show records from classes for my computer form view. Finish. Let's use my field picker to have my class name and description on there. These settings are still the same, so let's drag them on. This is done, exit layout, and I've got math, and I've got my English. All right, so I've got my layouts for students and classes and so forth. Okay, what's next? All right, so we have our classes, we have our students, this is awesome. Now we have to have a way of lining the two of them up. So if you go back to File, Manage, Database, um, let's go into our relationship graph. So we've got students and we've got classes and we have our join students classes right here. And we have to, what we have to do basically is have a student and a class show up in here and then make records in this one because this is the table that basically says this student is following that class, that student is following that class. So I have to create records in this one and as you can see the IDs need to be line, uh, related to, um, to the tables right here. Like for instance the student ID needs to be related like this. The class's ID needs to be related to the class. And now basically either from the students or from the class layout, I have to be able to add, like if I'm on the student layout, I have to be able to add classes to this um, to this table. And when I'm on the classes uh, layout, I need to be able to add students to this layout. So I can say, I can for instance go to the math class and say, uh, John Doe and Jane Doe need to follow this class. So I need to create records in here. And so we've created these relationships, but these relationships also have settings. If we double click this sign, we can see that between students and our join table, we have a few settings that we can work with. Now, these are very important because I need to uh, be able to create records in this table. And then the only way that I can do that is when I, in this relationship, I allow the creation of records in this join table via this relationship. That's a very important one to check. And you have to check it on the correct side. You have to check it on the join side because in this join table, I want to create records. So we have to check this one. And then there's another option here, delete related records in this table when a record is deleted in the other table. This sounds a bit complicated, but what that means is if I have a student like uh, John Doe and I'm assigning him to a bunch of classes like math class and, 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 and English class, if I delete this student, if this student uh, leaves the school or if I made a mistake, then what do I want to do with these join records? Do I want to delete those as well or do I not want to delete those? Now, if I delete a student, I don't need his join records anymore because the student is gone and then these records will just be orphaned records anyway. So in this case, I can delete uh, the, rec the join records in this table when a student is deleted in the other table because I don't need those anymore. But in some cases, you don't want to do this. So always think very carefully about whether if you want to check this box or not. In this case, I do want to check this box. Okay, that's great. That uh, works for our student side. Now from the classes side, I need to have a look as well. And you have to pay attention here because now the classes is on this side and the join students is on this side it's just because they're lined up like this in this uh, in this uh, dialogue here now that doesn't really matter but what is important is that you then have to check uh, the boxes on this side because I want to um, allow the creation of join records here in on this side so I um, have to allow the creation of records here and I want to delete related records when a record is deleted in the classes table so when I delete a class 
I don't want any of those join records anymore because when the class is gone, I'm not going to use these records. They're going to be useless. So I'm going to hit OK. That's kind of good. Um, this one looks good, looks kind of set up. The only thing I could do is add some colors here, but that's not important right now. That's only uh, gonna be important when I start like duplicating these boxes. But let's do it, it looks a little funky. Okay, so I have Jane Doe, and now I wanna assign her to a couple of classes. How do I do that? I need to be able to create records in that join table, but I wanna do it from here. And a way to create records in another table, um, because I'm on the students table right now, is to create a portal. Let's go into edit layout and we can see up top that there is a portal tool right here. And this, um, as it says right there, display records from related tables on a layout. Now, as you can see, file manage database. If I'm on the student's layout, then our join table is a related table because there is a relationship. So now I can display related tables um, from the join table. That's great. Let's get our portal tool. That's the one. Let's drag a little box here. Uh, we can just guess the size right now. And I'm going to show related records. And this is important. This is not going to work if there's no relationship. And I've got relationships with classes and with joint student classes. Now that's the one I want. Do I want to sort these? Not really. Do I want to filter those? Not really. Do I want to allow deletion? Yes, I do, because if I make a mistake here, I have to be able to delete that line. So I do want to allow deletion. I would like to allow vertical scrolling, because if I have a bunch of records in here, I want to scroll. And otherwise, I don't need anything else. Okay, great. Add fields to the portal. Which fields would I like to add? I am already on the student's layout, so I don't have to see the student ID, um, but I do want to see the class ID. Now, the, the thing is, if you have a related record and the relationship between students and this join table is the student IDFK, if I create a record in this join table, FileMaker will automatically fill in the student ID because I'm always going to be on a certain student's um, record. And the only way that this relationship is valid, if I create a record here, it needs to be related to this student. And FileMaker is going to fill that out for us automatically. So FileMaker will take care of the student ID. So I only have to fill in the class ID. And we can test that out to see uh, if that is actually happening. Um, okay, so I only need the classes ID on here. So I can make this one a bit smaller. There you go. And I would like to be able to delete records as well. So I'm going to have a little text box here and I'm going to type in delete right there. I'm going to put this somewhere here. And in order to make it look like a bit of a button, I'm going to give it an underline. I'm going to make it a little bit bluish like this so that it looks like a hyperlink. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, give me a button setup. And um, let's have a look at this. I want to have a single step. This is a different in FileMaker 14 than it is in FileMaker 13. And the step that I would like to have is a delete portal row. Now, I don't know exactly where that is, so let's have a look. I want to do a delete. And then I get a bunch of delete here. I got delete record request, but I don't want to delete a record because the record is the student record. I don't want to delete a student, but I want to delete a portal row. So let's add that one. And then I got a few options here. Is perform without dialogue. I don't want that because I do want to have a box that asks me, are you sure you want to delete this record? Okay, cool. That's what I want. Let's hit OK. Let's um, see. Yeah, look at the options. Change cursor to hand over button. I do like that one. So let's check that one. And this is looking kind of good. Okay, now let's have a look at what this does. I've got Jane Doe and she's in class number one. Now the reason that that is is because I have this join table right here. I had already made a bunch of uh, records in here. So I've got student number two, that's Jane Doe, and she's in class number one. Now if I go back to my to this one and I go to the John Doe record, then we will see that I've got him already signed up to classes number one and class number two. But this is not very handy. I don't know what class number one is. I don't know what class number two is. So this is not very cool. So let's edit the layout and let's change this. I want to see the class names, but also I want to have the ability to select a class. 
right now I can only just um, go in here and type a number but that's not handy I want to have a selection so I'm gonna first of all turn this edit box I'm in my inspector in my data tab I don't want this to be an edit box I want this to be a drop down list the values from if I click here I've got nothing so I'm gonna click this pencil to create a new value list so I'm gonna hit new and I'm gonna say give me a list of classes that's what I want I can use custom values but that's kind of stupid because these classes are in the table so I'm gonna use the values from a field the field that I'm gonna use is gonna be from the classes table and because this one is the classes ID field I'm gonna to need to put the class ID in there but I also want to display the values from a second field I want to see the class name now I want to show only the values from the second field because I don't really want to deal with this ID number so I'm gonna click this box right here and I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna hit it OK again and again and then I'm gonna exit my layout to have a look at what this does. If I click on this field then I actually get English and math which is cool but as soon as I select one of those the uh, value that's in here is the ID number of this class which is not ideal because I don't really want to have to deal with those IDs. Now there is a trick that you can use to kind of get rid of that. That's kind of a funky little trick so I'm gonna um, teach this to you. Um, we do have to have the IDs in here but we want to display the um, the class names. Um, the way that I can do that is I can just keep this field because I need this to enter my data but I'm gonna put another field on top that's going to display the name. So I'm going to hit my um, Alt key on Mac and I'm going to drag this field and that, that basically makes a duplicate of my field. There you go. And then I can choose the field that I would like to use. And from my classes, I would like to use the class name. I don't want to create a label, so I'm going to just hit OK. And then I'm going to change a few settings to make this trick work. Now, this field is going to be standing on top of this field. So if I click on this one, I don't want to be uh, editing the class name. So I'm going to make sure that this one is not available in browse mode in the, under the data tab in my inspector. And this one doesn't have to be a drop down, but it has to be an edit box. Now I'm going to click in this one and I'm going to say that this one has to be available in browse mode but I will not make it available in find mode because if I want to find a class I don't want to find it using its number I want to find it using its name. So this one is going to be in find mode, this one in browse mode, this one's going to be the drop down and this one is going to be the edit box. Alright, let's have a look quickly like this. This looks kind of good. I've got my selections here and my name is showing up here. That's looking good. So now I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to shift click on this one and then I'm going to go to position align and I'm going to align them on the left edges so that they're standing nicely on top of each other right now I can kind of see that the text is coming through let's have a look at it here this is not looking very good and that is because this button doesn't have a background color so let's go into the appearance here and let's say that my fill needs to be a solid color of white great now my class name is showing up with a white background color and I'm not seeing that um, one at the bottom there okay this is not working entirely well yet so let's try to see if we can nudge this one frame and then go back to edit layout and nudge it one frame back yeah now it's showing up for for um, both fields. Now this was a bug in like FileMaker 12 and 13 and apparently they still haven't fixed that one yet so it's kind of annoying. If it is not working just nudge the field with your arrows, nudge it one uh, nudge to the left and then it should work and then you can just nudge it right back. It's kind of a silly little bug but well apparently it's very persistent. Okay, um, let's look at this. We've got John Doe, he's in math and he's in English. If I want I can delete um, this one is uh, this record if I want and then I can just add it right back okay I can add as many things as I want but I only have two classes the cool thing is if I go to my classes and I add a new class like biology oops that's not right like so and I go back to my students then I can also add biology to this list no matter how many um, classes I have I can just start adding them and now if I go to Jane Doe I can just add her to a bunch of classes as well 
Um, let's have a look at our joint student classes. We can see that this is now all starting to be filled in and you can see that the student IDs have been filled in automatically because of that relationship and the classes have been filled in by me using the drop down. Okay, this is cool from the student side of things, but um, what if I want to go to my classes and just select a class and then just add a bunch of students or alternatively just see which kind of students are in that class. Well, that's actually basically the same thing as we just did. So I'm going to do it in fast forward. We take this portal, we add it right here. We choose this related records and join students classes. We're not going to sort, we're not going to filter. We are going to allow deletion and we're going to allow vertical scrolling. Let's hit OK. We want to, because we are already on the classes, I don't want to see the class ID because I'm seeing the class information here. I just want to see the student's name. Okay, so the student ID is showing up right here. The student is going to be a drop down box. So let's go and say, I don't want this to be an edit box. Oh, I'm in appearance. I need to be under data. I don't want this to be an edit box. I want this to be a drop down list. I want to have values from a new value list called students. Students. Okay, then I want to use values from a field from students. I want to use the ID, but also display the full name. And the important thing here is that your full name has actually been set to a text because if this one is still set to a number or a calculation to result in a number, then you're just going to see question marks in your drop down. I want to include all the values and I want to show only the values from the second field. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try this one out. My drop down is showing me the names, that's good, but I'm still seeing the IDs, uh, not a big problem. Again, that same uh, trick, we use uh, Alt Option on Mac to drag. I think on Windows it is Control drag. Then from the students, we're going to show the full name. I don't want a label, so I'm going to just hit OK. If we remember correctly, we need to use a white background on this field. And then I can select the both of them. Actually, before I select the both of them, I need to go into data. The top field needs to be not available in browse mode and it needs to be an edit box. The bottom field needs to be not in browse. Oh, no, in browse, but not in find mode. And this one is a drop down list. That's correct. So I'm going to select the both of them, go to position, align, put them on top of each other. Let's exit the layout. And this is looking pretty good. I can select whichever I want and the ID will be stored in that field but I can only always just see the names. Now if I go through my classes right here then I can see which students are in which classes. So this is working and this is looking kind of good. Let's just add that little delete function. Now there's a little trick here. If you go into um, layout mode and you browse then you're not browsing between your records but you're browsing between your layout. So if I go from my lay classes to my lay students then I can simply take this delete button. I'm going to uh, control uh, command copy uh, command C and then I'm going to command V to paste it in here. I'm going to put it up here and then that's going to work as well. So I can just add a student and delete a student as I want. Okay, so this section was a whole join table section. Now we have the ability to create a bunch of different classes and a bunch of different students and then link them up with each other. This is the first part of our attendance and you need to make sure that you get that part right. All right, on to the next part. Um, we have our classes. So we have the biology class and we have the people that are in this class. Now, how exactly are we going to go about to actually track these, um, the attendance of these people? Um, you would probably think we just add some checkboxes in here, but there's going to be a little bit of a problem with that because this is just the biology class and all the students that are in there, but the attendance is going to be tracked, um, let's say, uh, on a certain date because um, this biology class might be taught like once a week. So every week you will have a different kind of attendance because some students might not be there that week. So what we're going to need to do is somehow link up the class with a certain date and then we can um, take attendance on that specific date for that specific class. In order to do that, let's go to File, Manage, Database and let's start a new table. So let's go to Tables and let's make a new table called Attendance, which was the one we actually had in the beginning, but now we've created it again. As always, this will start with an ID and I'm going to say this one needs to be a number, so Command N. 
Um, okay, that's good. I'm gonna double click this one and say I want this to be an auto enter serial number. I want this to have a date because I'm gonna take attendance on a certain date and that's probably gonna be command D. Yep, command D, perfect. And then um, the moment that I actually want to take the attendance, I will create this attendance record and that um, will also be then on the same date um, as the date that I'm taking the attendance because I'm going to create this new attendance record the moment that I start taking my attendance. So I can actually make it easy on myself. I don't have to manually enter the date. I can just go in here into auto enter and say automatically enter the following data into this field, the creation date on the moment of creation. So that's handy, creation date, then I don't have to fill in the date. Then I need to um, relate this to a certain class, so class ID FK. And it's gonna be a number, so command N is gonna be a number. Okay, great. Uh, that's, I can add a bunch of other fields if I want. I can add the teacher's name and stuff like that, but that could also be attached to the class, but I'm not gonna get into all of that stuff right now. This for now will do, okay. Let's click OK, let's do a, because we have this attendance layout now, but if you remember, I always like to put this one in table view and make a new one as an actual layout. So I'm going to go into edit layout first, click new layout, and I'm going to say lay attendance. This is going to show the records from attendance for my computer in a form layout, and that'll do. So now I have this one twice. I have attendance and lay attendance, but this attendance, I'm going to exit this layout and I'm going to turn this one into a table view. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize my stuff because now it's all mixed up. I'm going to go to File, Manage Layouts, and I'm going to say, give me a new folder for my tables. And I usually like to make a folder for the layouts as well. Let's do that, layouts. And then I can kind of get my stuff a little bit organized. Now this one has ended up inside my tables folder, which I don't want, so I'm gonna drag it to the side here. Let's see if I can get it out somehow. Mm, yeah, like this. Okay, my layouts are out now. So I've got my lay attendance. I'm gonna start at the top. I've got my lay students. I can grab these little handles here and put this in layouts. I'm gonna take my layout for my classes and my layout for my attendance. And then I've got all my tables, like my students table, my classes table, I've got my join table, and I've got my attendance table. So now everything is nicely organized, and I've got my tables in table view, and I've got my layouts in layout view. So let's go to my lay attendance, and let's edit the layout. Let's add a few fields. Um, I can use my field picker again. Here you go, and I can add my date and my class IDFK. So I've got this stuff still set up like it was set up before, which is fine. I'm just going to drag this over here. There you go, and I'm going to close this one. Now this one is a date, and it's going to be entered automatically, but maybe sometimes if I forgot to take attendance, I might want to change my date. So I'm going to go ahead to data, and I'm going to make this one a drop-down calendar, to, and it's going to include an icon to show and hide the calendar. So that's kind of cool. This one is for my class. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And here I would like to select a one of my existing classes, which is cool because I already have a drop-down list for that. And that's the one that's named classes. Okay, if I exit my layout, I can't do anything yet because I don't have any records. So as soon as I make a new record, today's date shows up. Now in my class ID, I can select a class like biology. But then again, that number shows up, which I don't like. But we know by now what the trick for this is. I'm going to Alt drag this field over here. Then I'm going to choose a related record, but I don't have any related records. This is a problem. I've got some unrelated tables, but I can't do anything with unrelated tables. So let's cancel this one and let's go and look what's happening with my relations. So let's go to File Manage Database relationships. I'm working on my attendance. I've got my class IDFK, but my class IDFK is not related to anything. Now I can just simply drag that relationship over here and relate them uh, this way, but this is going to create a um, big um, relationship spaghetti later on. So I like to use this uh, system that's called a anchor buoy uh, method. You can Google that and find out the explanation. It's pretty a pretty complicated explanation, 
But in reality, what it means is that every time you start a, a layout, like I've just started my attendance layout, you should take this box and drag it over to this side. And then every time you want to attach something to it, um, you just grab this one and you want to attach the classes to the attendance. You just grab this one and you just make with these two green plus buttons right here, you make a duplicate of this table occurrence. And what I've done now is I've not made a second table. I've got my classes table. And if I go over here, you can see source table classes. And this one also has a source table classes. I did not just create a new table. I just created a new table occurrence. And that's a very important difference. And if you go and look in your tables, you can see that I still only have one classes table, but I have two different occurrences of this table in my graph. So I've got classes and classes two. Now classes two is not very clear. So I'm going to rename this one into classes attendance. And then I'm going to put it here and this keeps my relationship graph really nice and clean. And so this way I can attach the class ID of K to the class ID right there. Okay, that's kind of cool. So now how do we do this? Let's go back and um, take our classes value. That's really cool. I'm going to uh, Alt drag this field over here and I'm going to choose from my related table classes attendance. I'm going to choose the class name. I don't want a label for this, so I'm just going to hit OK. And that looks kind of good. Let's give it this a little try. We've got English. And as soon as we select English, English is uh, shown here. That's good. I did have a drop down on this field, so we should remember to change all the settings of these fields. The name field should not be a drop down, but an edit box. And it should be available, not in, not in browse mode, but in find mode. And this one should be available in browse mode, but not in find mode. And that's all. I'm going to select the both of them using shift and I'm going to go to position align and put them on top of each other. Let's exit our layout. Now I've got my class here, biology or English or math. I can choose whichever I want. Okay, that's great. That's working. So now I'm on a certain date. I can select the class that I have. And then uh, what I need is I need to get all those students that are in that class on a list right here. Now we've seen these lists before. It's exactly like uh, here. We need to have the same kind of thing going on on our attendance layout. Um, what do we need in here? We need a list of the students. So we need the student names, but we also need to mark whether if they are present or absent, if it's maybe um, a um, an, an absence that was um, kind of um, agreed upon before or if it's like an, an illegal absence or, or however you would call that. Um, so we're going to need um, to have a related table with some fields in there. So let's go ahead to file manage database. Let's go to our tables and I've got attendance. So I'm going to make attendance details. Very simple. We're going to start with an ID. That is going to be a number, so command N. And as always, it's going to be an auto enter serial number. And because this attendance detail needs to be related to a master attendance record, I'm going to uh, record, I'm going to write attendance IDFK, which is going to be a number. Great. And then what else do I need? Um, I need a student IDFK, which is going to be a simple number. Um, I already have the class ID in the attendance record, but maybe in some cases it might be handy to have that class ID in, um, in this table. So it's not absolutely necessary, but we could make a class ID FK in here as well. And then um, we have that there um, always. Now, Maybe I'm making it a little bit too difficult um, for you guys. So maybe we should just skip this one for now. Okay, um, what else do we need? So we have our student and then we need to mark whether if the student is present or absent. So um, let's have a present, let's call it present um, or status or something like that. We could call it whatever we want. We could, let's say status, that's maybe a bit clearer. Okay, that's going to be a text. So let's do command T and that's looking kind of good. And maybe we have the ability to add a remark. That could be handy as well. 
Okay, cool. Let's go into our relationships. I've got my attendance details. That's going to be related to my attendance. So let's go in there. Let's make this one a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm done with this one, so I can actually make this one a bit smaller. And then I can attach this one here. Um, let's see. I've got my attendance ID is related to my attendance attendance ID of K and I have to go into these settings because if I'm on the attendance records I want to have the ability to create attendance detail records so I'm gonna allow the creation and I'm gonna delete related records in this table when a attendance record is deleted now if I think forward a little bit this one might actually not really be necessary because in the end I'm going to make a script that adds all my students to my attendance so I might not have to do this manually so uh, maybe I don't have to check this box but for now I will just leave it so that I can if need to I can manually add students uh, later okay um, so that's looking kind of good um, if we would have had the class ID in here as well, then we could we uh, would have had to make an, a second relationship from the class ID here to the class ID there, and then that way that would have always been filled in, and I would have had that ID also in this table. It's not absolutely necessary, but in some cases that can be handy. Okay, looking kind of good. We go into Edit Layout on our Attendance Layout, and let's add a portal. This one, let's add it here. Let's make it nice and big. And let's see, what do we need? We need attendance details. I don't want to sort or filter. I do want to allow deletion and I do want to allow vertical scrolling. Okay, I'm going to need not my attendance IDFK because that's useless. I need my student, I need his status, and I need a remark. Okay, that's kind of good. Good. Um, let's see. Now this one is going to have to be a drop down for students. So we can just um, go in here and make this a drop-down list with the values from students. That's kind of good. But then um, to get their name, I need to get into File Manage Database. I need to have a look. I've got my attendance details. This is my student at EFK. And as you can see, there are no students attached to this. So I need to get this one. I need to duplicate this one. And you might think that making these duplicates is kind of weird. Um, but I can guarantee you that if you just start making relationships all over the place this is going to be such a huge mess that very quickly you won't know what you're doing anymore so let's rename this one students attendance details and then we know exactly what it's doing and then we're going to go from student.efk to the ID right there that's good that works and that's also the reason why I give them color so that you can immediately see students is here as well classes is here as well so that makes it kind of uh, good to see things I'm gonna give this one a color as well so that they're all nicely colored okay my student at EFK has the drop down of students that's all good and that's probably gonna work so now let's do that little trick we do when we copy this field using uh, alt drag and then from my related table of student attendance detail I can get the full name okay again those tricks where this one is available not in browse but in find mode and this one is an edit box this one is available in browse but not in find mode and this one is at the drop down then I can take the both of them put them on top of each other but then I do have to remember that in this theme this one does not have a background so I have to go into appearance and give this a white background color and then let's exit the layout let's have a look if this is already working I can select manually a student and which was this one again I actually don't have any labels at top here so let's quickly make them let's do student then let's alt drag this one over here and call this one status and let's alt drag for the remark okay and I've also found that it looks a bit difficult to see these records because we don't have any borders there so maybe what we should do is let's try if we select them all let's try if we can give them a line or something a line that's maybe a bit of a gray or something yeah that looks a little bit better now the reason that there is an empty line here is so that I can click it to select a second student 
and you will always have this empty line here if you don't want this then you have to go into file manage database go into this relationship between attendance and attendance details and you have to uncheck this one but the problem with that is at that moment of course you cannot create any extra um, records in here at least not right away you would have to make some sort of a um, way around of, of uh, doing it so if you want to manually add uh, people let's go to file manage database and make it like it was allow the creation of records there you go now if we're gonna do this uh, thing where we have a script that man that automatically adds all my students for this class then we won't need this extra line uh, to manually add people okay uh, another thing I need in here let's move this over a little bit I want to have the ability to delete stuff so let's do this let's go to another layout where I already have this one let's do control copy and let's go back in fact I'm gonna show you a little trick because we've done this before let's insert a picture let's see if I have any nice pictures in here um, somewhere here I should have something of a little PNG image let's make it a small one I don't know if this is gonna look good or not. Yeah, this looks good. This is a small PNG image. It has transparency, so that's kind of cool. And you can just put it inside the portal right there somewhere. And then you can just go into button setup. You can say, give me a single step. And the single step needs to be a delete portal row. Uh, that's okay. And then I want to change the cursor to a hand over the button. All right, that's great. If I do that, then I will have a nice button that allows me to delete people from this list. All right, great. This is the kind of second part to it. Now we have for any given date, uh, we can uh, choose a class and we can add students. But of course, now I've got the problem that I could add manually add students that are not actually in that class. A solution to this would be like a conditional value list, but that's another lesson. That's not this one. Another way is to um, automatically add all the biology students to this list. Uh, adding some new students to a couple of classes. So I've made a couple of new students, but I noticed a little problem when I make a new record. I can enter a first name like, um, let's say, Jill. And then if I hit tab, I arrive in here. And that's not really cool because I want to hit tab again and um, arrive in there. So my uh, tab order is wrong, but I can very simply change that by going to edit layout and going to layout, set tab order. And then I can see numbers here. And it goes from one to three to four. And that's not cool because I want to go from one to two there. And then the rest can be uh, whatever it wants to be. Okay, so that's better. Let's exit the layout. Let's make another new one. Let's say June. And then when I tap, I do arrive in the correct one. Um, June, um, hey, Lee, or whatever, it doesn't matter. So now wherever I am, if I'm on the student layout or on the uh, classes layout, I can just attach a certain student to a certain class. You can do math, and there you go. Uh, and then I can see in my classes layouts that these people these students are actually being added to these classes All right, great So I've got a few more students and a few in my classes and now I can go and to my attendance And now we can uh, actually look at how we're going to make this script to automatically add all these students uh, to my attendance record here um, so what do we have here? Um, we've got my biology class, which is class number three so I've got biology, which is class number three, and I've got my join table right here. And if I do a find here, and I look for class number three, perform find, then I can find that for my class number three, I've actually got one, two, three, four students, number one, two, three, and five, that are in this class. I need this list of students to get into my attendance details. So I need student one, two, three, and five. So basically I could, go here and then say for biology I could say give me student if I double click I can just enter a number what I need is one two three and five okay so I need those students to get in here in here automatically now this way uh, I did it manually 
just to kind of show you what needs to be done and then we can just uh, kind of select their status and make it a mark and stuff like that for the status we could do something like uh, we could go to data and we could say give me a radio button set and uh, make a new one let's say presence and we can say present or absent okay great So now you can see that you have these nice little boxes and I can make a remark as well. Okay, so I can choose whether someone is present or absent so that goes pretty fast and then I can make a remark if I need to. Maybe he was sick. Okay, cool. So uh, now I need to get these in here automatically. Let's look at what uh, kind of actions we need to do. First of all, what we need to do is we need to get the uh, biology ID, which is number three. Then we need to go in this table to find all my students that are in my class number three so I need to do that find that I just did then I need to get all of these records into my attendance details which is still here but it needs to be in here let's go into attendance details and I'll set this in table mode so we can see that um, for my first attendance I've got these number one two three and five students already in here um, and if I want, I can modify, I can add the f class field as well, so you we can see which class is here. But the class field is not in attendance details, but it's in attendance. But that's okay, that's a related table, so we can simply add a field there. So we can see for class number three, on this first date, I've got these four students in here. So what I need to do is I need to get these one, two, three, and five, these students that I have in my join table. I need to get those four, those four students, into my attendance details table. Uh, the cool thing is, if I go to my join table and I do a find, and then I leave this found set, uh, because now I'm only looking at four out of ten records, I can show all and see them all, but I only want the ones from class number three. So these, I only want these four out of ten, I only want these four imported into my attendance detail. But the cool thing is, if I go here, I do this find, if I then go to my attendance details and I import my join table in here, then it will only import those four found records. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do to that join table, look for all the people that are in that class, and then import them in here. So that's basically going to be my script. Okay, let's have a look at how that goes. Let's go to the script workspace, which actually we haven't been to yet in this exercise. And this is FileMaker 14, so it looks a little bit different. Let's click this plus button to make a new script. And let's call this one import records, import students, actually, into attendance detail. Now, before... Um, in FileMaker this all looked a little bit easier because you would just have all your script steps here and you can just choose one and it would show up here now this has changed a little bit this is basically the list of all the scripts that you have and this has all the script steps but um, this has a nice little search box which is handy that's kind of good and um, you can actually just type in uh, this thing as well um, you can type a step or choose from the list so you can either go into this list and choose a step that you want and add it to your script or and this is for the more experienced guys we can just type ahead and then it actually looks a little bit like real programming now for the beginners you won't know which script steps you need um, but if you do know the name of the script step then you can just type ahead right here now I haven't made a script in FileMaker 14 yet so let's give it this a try now to make a script, we need to look at all the steps that we need to do. Now, if we remember correctly, we're going to start in our attendance layout. We're going to make a little button that says import students. And from then on, we need to do a few actions. The first action that we needed to do was to find out exactly which number of class that I have here. So this is class number three. And I have to remember that number three. Now, to remember a value in FileMaker, what you need to do is use a set variable. And you can already see that right here. This sets a local or global variable to a spe specified value. That sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. What I can do with this set variable, and I'm just going to add it because that's the one I need, set variable, it has two settings. 
it has a name and it has a value. So what I need to do is I need to remember the class ID that that is number three. So basically I have two things that I need to remember. Um, I need to remember this value, this number three, that's uh, behind this field. So that's going to be the value that I have to remember and I can immediately specify the value as being, um, these are the fields in my attendance layout here. And the class IDFK, that's the value that I need to remember because that's my number three right there. So I'm going to add this one to this um, calculation right here. That's the one I need to have from my attendance table my class ID of K, so number three, that's the one I have to remember. Now, of course, this is going to change for every attendance record. It's always going to be a different ID. So therefore, I need to get that ID from that field. Okay, so that's my value. That's my number three. But I also have to give this variable a name uh, because that way I can make different variables and use them later on uh, in different uh, places. So I can, uh, if I give this variable a name, then I can identify it later on and use it again. This one is my class ID, so I'm just going to call this one class ID. And if I go out of this field, you will see that all of a sudden a dollar sign appears before my name. Now that's normal because names prefixed by a dollar are local variables available only within the current script. Prefix the name with two dollar signs to make the variable available throughout the current file global. So that means that what I have got now is a variable, the class ID, which will be number three in this case. I can use this variable throughout my entire script because the, the next step I'm going to do after this is I'm going to leave this attendance layout and I'm going to go to another layout but this variable means that I have remembered this value and so I can use it later on even if I'm on another layout. If I use two dollar signs in the beginning like here I can add, I can manually type another um, dollar sign. If I do that then this class ID um, stays available even after my script has end it because if I just use one single dollar sign then when my script ends the file maker kind of forgets this variable but sometimes you have multiple scripts that run one after the other and then you might need to use uh, need to have your variable uh, globally available so you can use it again later on for now I only need to use this variable during this script so a simple local variable is fine so I have the name dollar sign class ID and I might want to command C or uh, command, yeah, command C, copy this, this name because I need to um, use this name later on and I can't make any typos, otherwise, it's not going to work. So, my variable is named dollar sign class ID and it's got the value of um, the value that's in the class IDFK field. Okay, sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Okay, remember what we have to do after this. Um, I've remembered my number three, which is here. I've remembered it and now I'm going to go to my table join student classes which will probably show everything and I'm going to do my find so I'm going to go to this layout that's one step I'm going to enter find mode I'm going to enter the number three in this field and then I'm going to perform find so these are the steps that I have to take in my script right now so as you can see it was a go to layout you can go and look for that here uh, probably under navigation go to layout right so this one is added here go to layout which layout do I want to go to let's specify that I need to go to my join table great then I want to enter find mode um, let's see if I can not type ahead yes enter not browse but enter find mode this one says pause but I don't want this to pause so let's go into my settings and let's not pause this Great. Enter find mode. Then I'm going to um, enter my variable, so my number three, into this field. That's called a set field. So let's set field. Great. Let's look at the settings for set field. So I have to specify a target field and I have to enter a value in there. So the field that I want to set is the classes IDFK in my join table. So let's specify in my join table classes IDFK. That's good. And then my result is going to be that number three that I remembered. That's the value I have to put in here. 
Now that number three is, um, I could go in here, specify and type number three, but that's really stupid because that's not going to work very well in the future. What I need to do is I remembered that number three right here and it has the name dollar sign class ID. So basically I'm going to enter dollar sign class ID and if, uh, I could type it in here, but um, if you remember, I could make typos. I think I copied that one before, so let's paste in here dollar sign class ID. Great, so basically um, we're remembering a value here and we're using that here to enter it into this field. Great, that's looking good. I've got my join student classes. That's going to get this value and then, um, so I've entered the value here, then I need to hit that perform find button. So let's do that right here, perform find. It is actually is a script step. So let's do that. And when we perform our find, we will get exactly what we have here. We will get um, these found records. <clears throat> okay, after we have these, we need to get these guys into our attendance details. So we're going to go there. That's another go to layout. Go to layout right there. We're going to go to a layout attendance details. And then we're going to import those join records we found here into this table. So import records, that's good. And this is going to have a bunch of settings. Let's say uh, we want to perform this without dialog because we don't actually want to have to deal with a dialog. Specify a data source. Yep, let's do that. Let's add a file. And then we're going to have to select the file that we're working with right now. So that's in uh, my computer somewhere um, here, I guess. That's this file. So let's specify this file. And the important thing right here is that afterwards you shouldn't uh, change the file name of your file anymore because then this step is not going to work anymore. If you want to make sure that this step always keeps on working even if you change your file name, then you have to not actually specify the file but you have to somehow say that I want the current file name to be used as this thing here. But that's maybe a little bit more advanced, let's not get into that right now. We want to specify the import order, that's good, so let's check that one. And what I want is I want to import not from my students but from my joint students classes. I want to import into my current table of attendance details. That's good. But I think there's a little um, some stuff is going a little bit wrong here. First of all, I do not want to import my ID because that's kind of useless in this case. What I need is for my student ID to be imported. So basically what I have to do now is I have to line them up correctly and you have these little arrows here so you can grab uh, the one you want and just uh, put it behind the one you need. I always work from the top to the bottom so I don't need my ID. I have my student ID FK that needs to line up with my student ID FK. I have my classes ID which actually is a second way to get the class ID into this attendance details table but I didn't make a field for that right here, so I'm gonna skip that step this time. I'm gonna click this button here because as you can see, now it's an arrow, now it's not, so I'm not importing anything right now. This time I'm only importing the student IDFK into the student IDFK field of the attendance details table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add new records, that's good. Um, I'm not going to update existing records because every time I uh, import this list of students in here, that's probably going to be just a new list of students. Okay, I'm not going to import anything in the status or in the remark fields because I have to fill them out later on. So this is pretty simple and this stays basically like so. I would like to perform auto enter options while importing because I want to have like the serial number and stuff like that entered automatically. There is not a lot of other fields that need to be, um, I don't have a modification date, but if I would have had one there, that would be filled in as well. So I'm just going to check that box and hit import. Now I've set up all the settings for this script step, so this is kind of good. Then what else do I have to do after this? I have set my class ID variable, I've gone to my join students, I have found all the students from my class, then I have imported all of those students into the attendance detail. I guess that kind of concludes my script, so now I can go back to my original layout. So I'm going to go to layout, that's the second one right there, and original layout, that's good, that's exactly where I want to go. That kind of ends my script, so let's um, 
close this and let's save all my scripts and then let's actually try this out let's go to my layout of attendance and let's make a new button that can perform this script I should have a button um, button 2 right here somewhere and let's make a big button and let's say um, what is this now um, is this for my text type the text for the label oh, that's changed as well um, import students great and I want to perform not a single step but I want to perform a script and the script is this script import students into attendance details I could give an optional script parameter but in this case I don't have to the options is pause current script well I don't really need to pause a current script I do want to change the cursor to a hand over the button let's look at this here um, yeah I don't have any current scripts going on but I'll just leave this on the default okay good um, what is this here oh yeah it can actually have different styles of buttons but I don't really need that I just I'm gonna Oh yeah, this is also new and following. Yes, I've got all of these different options here to have. Oh, I can use a little, uh, like this. I can use a little button like this, and it can actually look like this or like that. Or yeah, this this looks kind of good actually. I can even make that a bit bigger too. Huh, look, I can make it like a big picture. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, see new stuff in FileMaker 14. That's kind of fun. Okay, so this script is supposed to import my students. Let's exit the layout. I still have all my students in here, so let's just quickly delete all of these guys from here. And then let's um, run our script. Now we can just run this script and hope that everything goes well. But if you're using FileMaker Advanced, we can actually use the script debugger to kind of see what's happening. And we could also use the data viewer, but I don't have a lot of space here. Um, let's use the data viewer. Let's put the data viewer here. It's it's not that big. We can maybe try this. See if it works. So what this does, the script debugger, it basically stops your script and allows you to step through your script one step at a time so that you can kind of see if everything is going well. So let's click this button. And then my script is kind of showing up here. It's going to uh, do this script. And now this looks a little bit different, so I, let's have a look at what these things do. Continue and halt script, and this is step over, and this is step in. Yeah, I think uh, this one is the, the one I'm going to want. So let's step into this script, and then let's see what happens. So the first step is I'm going to set a variable of class ID, and I can look in my data viewer to actually see if this is actually happening or not. Let's make this one a bit bigger so I can see what's going on here. And the data viewer is kind of going to show the fields that I have and the values that I um, that I have to work with. So if I step into this one, I will do my first step here. My set variable is created right here. So my variable is called dollar sign class ID, and it has the value of number three because that's the value in that field. Great. So now if I step one step further, we're going to do this go to layout step. So we're still in the layout attendance. Let's step in. And what you can see right here is that my attendance class IDFK field is no longer available. So that number three is no longer available because we've gone to another layout. But it's okay because I have it here as my variable. Let's enter find mode. Let's set our field. So now my value number three is entered in here. Let's perform our find. So we've got four, uh, four records found here. Then let's go to our attendance details layout. Let's go and do our import records. And then you can see that four records have now been imported. And let's go to our original layout. So that basically uh, show, uh, lets us see if there are any um, items going wrong. And actually, I did forget an important thing because in my um, script here, nothing is showing up. And if I go into my lay attendance, attendance details I can see that four records have been made but they have not been linked to my attendance record so that's kind of a mistake that I've made let's go back to our script workspace and let's add those steps so I have to make a second variable let's command copy and paste this one over here and the variable that I have to make is my attendance ID needs to be taken as well 
and that's going to be my ID from my attendant record from my attendance table so that's this one attendance ID great and I'm going to copy this one command copy okay so after I have imported my records what I need to do is I need to set this value uh, I need to set this field to the value of my attendance this is my attendance IDFK I need to put the ID of my attendance in here and in this case is probably going to be the first one so it's all going to be number one but I need to set the value for all of these fields now there is a function for that in FileMaker and you can find that under records replace field contents if you choose that one you can permanently replace the contents of the field attendance IDFK in these four records of the current found set so basically what that does replace field contents will put a value in all of these records so I'm gonna cancel that one and let's add this one uh, after here let's do replace uh, let's type it in here replace field contents Great, and we're gonna move this over here. This needs to go one step higher. There you go. Then let's go into the settings. I wanna perform this without a dialog. I wanna specify the target field. The target field is gonna be attendance IDFK, and the value is gonna be my, I'm gonna use a calculated result, and it's gonna be my dollar sign attendance ID. Okay, that way I will put my um, attendance ID in this field and they will all be the the fields will all be related let's go back to my lay attendance let's try the script again so I'm gonna save my script first if I can get there Oops. there you go I'm gonna close and save all let's do this one again and this time I'm not gonna use the script debugger and now they have all been entered and they have all been assigned to this attendance so if we go in here and we see, because now we're seeing four out of eight, if we show them all, we can see that the first time I imported them, I've got one, two, three, and five, but no attendance IDFK value. And the second time I do. So what I can do is I can find all the ones where this field here is empty, match empty, perform find, and then I can just delete them all records, delete found records, delete all. And now if I show all my records, I've got only the good ones that have actually been uh, imported in that last instance. Okay, <clears throat> so now I have all my biology students in here, and I can just simply check whether if they're there or not, and then I can add a remark. And if I do a new record for a different class, let's say math, then I can import my students and you can see that I have a different set of students because these are all the guys that are in my math class. Let's have a look. I've got John Doe, Mick Fontaine and Jill Peters. Let's see if they are all in my math class. Let's look for my math class. John Doe, Mick Fontaine and Jill Peters. All right, that seems to be working. And this will probably make it a lot easier for you guys to um, track attendance and to um, this import students button is really going to make your job easier and it's going to make it um, less prone to mistakes because if you manually have to add the people in here which you can still do right now that's the way we've set it up I could still add for instance Humpty Dumpty if he for, for some reason shows up and joins this class I could add him manually but the fact that you're importing um, these students with this script uh, makes it that you just don't make the mistake of adding the same person twice or forgetting someone who is not there and so forth all right you can of course make this a lot um, uh, a lot better by adding a lot of functions a lot of data a lot of stuff but this is the basic idea of how you would go about making a system like this if you want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can always go to my Udemy page where I've got a few FileMaker courses that are far more detailed than these short videos that I make on YouTube. For instance, there is a FileMaker beginner tutorial uh, where we make a contacts database and this one is free so you can follow it whatever you want. And basically in this one we make a simple contacts database which shows you all the basics of how to make layouts and lists and menus etc um, in FileMaker. 
then we build on to that one to make a complete FileMaker invoice database which shows you an invoice structure that basically every single company uses. It allows you to make quotes and invoices to track your products and your inventory and it allows you to make all kinds of reports and graphs and stuff like that to track all of your income and stuff like that. And then I've got a FileMaker booking and reservation system which is really cool and shows you a lot of cool tricks and techniques to um, book and reserve items in a company where you do stuff like if you have a hotel or a car or equipment rental or something like that this uh, course is a really interesting one for those kinds of situations so head over there by following the links in the description to learn a ton more about FileMaker